So today I'm going to show you how I make chicken and dumplings. Now chicken and dumplings is just a real traditional recipe all through Appalachia, but of course in other areas too. It's just one of those really hearty comfort meals. But since it is so popular, wherever it is that someone's making it, there is just various different ways that people kind of tackle the issue of making chicken and dumplings. One of the most common things that you'll notice that's different is the type of dumplings. A lot of people like the more fluffy, like um, biscuit-like dumplings, and they kind of, they're drop dumplings usually, they drop them in. And then there's the other side kind of, of people who like a chewy or kind of a chewier dumpling. And I'm one of those people. So I actually uh, make my dumplings and roll them out, cut them into little strips or squares or pieces and drop them in that way. That's how I prefer to do it. But there's so many different um, variations of chicken and dumplings and that just shows you what a great recipe it is, how versatile it is. Now a lot of recipes, they start with just simply a chicken uh, that they boil and maybe they put some butter and some salt and pepper in it and they make the broth that way then they take the chicken out and they take the chicken off and then put it back in the broth and then they um, of course make their dumplings somewhere along the way when i first started making chicken and dumplings um, I, I realized that i wanted my broth to be really flavorful like i'm one of those people that i don't like thick stuff i like it brothy i like my even my chicken and dumplings to be more on the brothy th side than the chicken side i mean than the thick side um, so I've started, like I first, I have right here in front of me, I have some carrots and some celery and some, uh, some onions chopped up. So I will go ahead and, and kind of roast those in the bottom of the pan that I'm going to make my stock in. Then I'll put the chicken in and then I'll I even add some butter. Um, I'll roast these in either probably olive oil and then I add some butter when I put the chicken in, some salt and pepper. Uh, maybe even sometimes some oregano, just whatever I'm feeling that day. And then I cook my chicken that way. It gives a real flavor to the broth, I think. But a lot of people don't do that. They just put the chicken in the water with some butter or salt and pepper or whatever and stew the chicken that way. So when I was growing up, of course, lots of people made chicken and dumplings. Uh, Granny made them, not all the time, but she made them some. But anytime you go to a church function, decoration day, a dinner on the grounds, family reunions, those kind of things, there was always a pot of chicken and dumplings. That was, and it was usually gone by the end of the meal. You know, people just really, really enjoyed it. When I first fell in love with chicken and dumplings, wasn't then, wasn't as a kid, um, at eating at those wonderful tables at church and uh, reunions in different places. But when I had Corey and Katie, I had a really tough pregnancy. Um, I was, I had pretty much every weird thing that can happen to you when you're pregnant happened to me when I was pregnant with them, which turned out great because they were both healthy and I was, I was okay too. But uh, I'd been on bed rest for so long from, five, from right before I was five months pregnant till completely till I had Corey and Katie and then I ended up having a c-section. So I had kind of a hard recovery there to kind of get my, get back on my feet and get my strength back and then of course recover from surgery. Well, Miss Cindy at that time, my mother-in-law, she still lived in Black Mountain, North Carolina, but of course she wanted to come see the baby, she wanted to come and help, and she did, and uh, one of the things she did when she was here was she made a huge pot of chicken and dumplings, I mean huge, and then she froze it in individual containers, put it in my freezer, and that way she said in the coming weeks and months when you're just exhausted and you know from recovering from your surgery and having two babies to take care of, you'll have supper you know, finished. Here's your chicken and dumplings. That was such a wonderful gift that she did for me. I didn't even realize it at the time, but she was right. In those coming weeks and months, it, oh my goodness, I was, I was sad when all that chicken and dumplings was gone from my freezer because on those days that I could, could just not, couldn't get it all done, I knew that there was a container of chicken and dumplings from Miss Cindy in the freezer that I could warm up for supper. Um, and, you know, it just made my day so much easier. So that's when I first truly fell in love with it. Now Matt's always been a fan of chicken and dumplings, so he's always pleased when I make it. And my favorite way to, to eat chicken and dumplings is I have to, even though there's dumplings in there, I have to have cornbread to go with it. I just think somehow it goes perfectly together. So that's, I'll be making cornbread before the day's out. But now I'm gonna show you how I make my chicken and dumplings. Okay, I have my stock pot that I'm gonna make my dumplings in, and I have, I've put some olive oil in the bottom, probably about a tablespoon maybe a tablespoon and a half, and then I'm gonna put my carrots, celery, and onions in. I'm 
add some pepper and some salt and of course any other whatever your favorite seasonings are certainly add them and then I'm gonna let that cook for oh I don't know five or ten minutes my onions and carrots and celery have been cooking for about eight or nine minutes. Now I'm ready to add my chicken. Like when it comes to chicken and dumplings, people like to have preferences of what cuts of chicken they like to use or whether they like to use a whole chicken. If you're making a lot of chicken and dumplings or maybe you want to um, use a whole chicken and then actually take some of the meat and do something else with it. Maybe put it in the freezer for, for other recipes. But today I have some chicken thighs and I'm, that's what I'm going to be using. I'm going to go ahead and put them in. And I'm going to add some water. Add a little more. Just to cover the cover the chicken and I'm going to add some more seasoning I add a little more salt a little more pepper and I'm, I really worry about the broth but I want it to be really rich I want it to be great so I'm going to add a, about a tablespoon of butter too and then I'm going to let this cook um, takes about 45 minutes or something for the chicken. You just want it to cook all the way through, so you'll, you just kind of need to keep a check on it and make sure that it's uh, done. And then we'll take it out and let it cool, and then we'll remove it from the bones. So my chicken is done, and I've pulled it off the bones. I have it here. I've also strained out the carrots and the onions and the celery that I cooked uh, cook the chicken in. So now I'm going to add my chicken back to the broth and then I'm going to be ready to make the dumplings. So now that I'm ready to make the dumplings, I'm going to show you how I make them. A lot of people like, and they are good, they like kind of you make a biscuit dough and you're dropping like drop dumplings and you're just kind of dropping them onto that boiling uh, liquid as it boils, the boiling broth. And those are good, but I prefer the kind of thinner, chewier kind. So that's what I make. So I've got two cups of all-purpose flour and I've added one teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of baking powder to it. I've also got one third cup shortening or lard um, that I'm going to cut into it. And then I've got two thirds for the liquid part. I'm going to use two thirds cup of the broth that I actually cooked the chicken in. Flour in there. Then I'm just going to cut this in using a pastry cutter. Now that I've got that cut in, I'm going to add my liquid here. I'm just going to use my hands to kind of get it to come together. And I'm going to put out a little flour. And then roll the dough out.
Okay, so now I've rolled it out probably to about an eighth of an inch thick, I would say. Maybe a little bit more than that, but not much. Fairly thin. And then I'm just going to cut it in strips and cut it in, in squares. Of course, my dough's not square, so they're not all going to be square. But that's what I'm aiming for. And you can make them as big or as small as you like. It's just personal preference. Try not to cut my mat. I think I could use scissors. That would probably work well too. Now we're ready to put them in the broth. So now I'm going to drop my dumplings down in the broth. I'm going to cover them and I'm going to let them simmer. Uh, you don't want them to boil really hard, but I'm going to let them kind of simmer and cook for about 25 to 30 minutes. So as you can see from Matt's plate, the chicken and dumplings turned out great. That's exactly how I like them. I like that brothiness. I don't like them to be thick. But the great thing about chicken and dumplings is it's such a simple thing to make. You're just basically, you have the chicken, you need the broth, and then you, you need some kind of dumpling to put in it. All the ways that you get to that, there's just so many various ways and it's up to each individual to find out how they like it once you have that basic recipe that's in my advice is to kind of play around with it and see do you like it real brothy like i do do you like those drop biscuits or drop dumplings that are more like biscuits that are real fluffy and thick or do you like the small chewy ones like i like so there's just a variety of different ways to make chicken and dumplings. But it is one of those comfort uh, meals that just really speak of home. Lots of different people's homes, but certainly mine here in Appalachia. And I hope if you are a chicken and dumplings fan, please, you'll have to have to leave a comment and let me know. Do you prefer those thicker dumplings? Do you like the small chewy ones like I like? Uh, do you like yours to be really thick or do you like more of the brothy, brothy kind like I do? Please leave a comment. I'm going to fix me something to eat, but I hope that you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is just a lot of food ways like chicken and dumplings. While I'm fixing my plate, I will tell you, I like to do mine different than Matt. <laughs> I like to crunch up my cornbread. So there I've got my cornbread crunched up. And then I like to put my chicken and dumplings right on top of it. I don't know why I think chicken and dumplings go so well with... Uh, cornbread, but I do. I think they just go perfectly somehow. 
I put the dumplings right along with the chicken and that wonderful juice right on top of my, my cornbread. So good. And we had some green beans from our garden last year. Getting to be time to plant green beans again this year. We've got some wonderful homegrown green beans and also some pickled beets from our garden last year. It's definitely time for beets. I have mine still in the greenhouse that I started, but I need to be putting them out outside. I hope to do that this week. So pretty much a feast for us here in Appalachia. Seconds. Seconds. I like chicken dumplings, especially good ones. Those are good? Very good. Most excellent. You like dumplings like this better or the big fluffy biscuit like ones? I like these better. And the little chicken broth that they're swimming in is mighty fine.